This is Ben. He is donor conceived and he is one of around 2,000 children born in Britain every year using donated eggs, sperms or embryos. The embryos are made via in vitro fertilization where sperm fertilizes egg outside the body. In Ben's case, the sperm donor is unknown. People use donor conception for numerous reasons. They could be infertile so they cannot conceive naturally. Also, there are single parents who want to have children of their own, as well as same-sex couples that desire to have a child but it being impossible the natural way. Nevertheless, there are some issues concerning donor conception. For example, parents who are not involved in the conception feel useless, and this can have negative impacts on their relationship. There may also be a lack of an emotional link between the child and the parent who wasn't involved in the conception. But Ben's is a happy family. Using donated sperm from a fertility clinic meant that Ben's parents, a married couple, are stated as his father and mother on his birth certificate. The sperm donor has no legal parenting rights or financial responsibilities towards him. But if Ben was the son of a single heterosexual or lesbian woman who didn't use a fertility clinic, then the donor would be Ben's legal father, liable to provide for him financially. A donor found himself in this situation when he donated his sperm to his lesbian friend so she could have two children. 13 years later, the state demanded he pay £26 per week to contribute towards his children's upkeep. The donor had unwittingly brought upon himself this burden, or could it swing the other way? In a recent landmark ruling, the High Court granted sperm donors legal rights to apply for regular contact with their biological children. So who do donor-conceived children belong to? Ben's parents told him about his origins when he was 17. Anomalies like his interest in music and sport, shared by no one else in the family, finally had an answer. Ben was glad his parents told him when they did, because some never find out. As he moved away to university, Ben wondered about his real father. The consequentialist approach argues that knowledge of one's genetic origins is essential for one's psychological well-being. A donor-conceived person, if aged 16 and over, can apply to the Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority, HFEA for short, and access information they hold about their donor. The information the HFEA have collected about donors include their physical description, the year and country of their birth, their ethnicity, their marital status, their medical history, and any additional information the donors choose to supply. Legislation on gamete donation has changed in recent years with some countries, including the UK, Norway and the Netherlands, removing donor anonymity so that donor-conceived children when they reach 18 can find out the identity of the donor. On 25th September 2012, it was reported that a man who had donated his sperm at a clinic in Denmark had passed on a genetic disease to five of his children. Five of the children had been diagnosed with NF1. If a donor finds out later that they have a genetic condition, should they try to pass on this information to the child conceived with their egg or sperm? The implications of donor conception are not restricted to matters of genetics, for example providing information with regard to any donor convictions for serious crime. HFEA figures show that the number of egg and sperm donors in the UK has increased over the past 10 years. With this rise comes the inevitable issue of commercialization of eggs and sperm, with people donating and selling their gametes as if it was a business. Some people are paying thousands of dollars to get egg and sperm acquired from supermodels and scientists. Do these people want a child or a trophy? In the past, there has been a case where a British man fathered 600 children by repeatedly using his own sperm in a fertility clinic he ran. Although it is admirable that he wanted to help out families who cannot conceive, there is a problem of 600 half-siblings all over the world not knowing each other. This raises the question, should there be a limit on egg and sperm donation? Presently, in the UK, there are regulations in place to ensure a situation like the above does not occur again. In 1990, the Human Fertilization and Embryology Act limited the number of children procreated from one sperm donor restricted to 10 families. However, in countries like the USA, such restrictions have not yet been implemented.